Well, hey, Doc Ludke. Uh, I'm glad that you stopped by today to have a discussion about vaccines and our airmen and our wing. And, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable in what less than a year a vaccine was developed. And I'm sure in your time in medicine, nothing like that has happened, right? No, this is the first time ever in history. Yeah. It's pretty pretty remarkable, and you know, I think it was uh, about a month and, about a month ago I got my first shot, and then several weeks ago I got my second shot, so I'm fully vaccinated now. And you know, I have to be honest, it was not a quick decision to get vaccinated. There was a lot of uh, thought that went into that, and and I I think you know I recognize that within our wing, the decision of whether or not to get vaccinated, first of all, is voluntary, and it's it's also a big decision. But I kind of want to share my story of kind of some things that I, were going through my mind when when I made a decision to get vaccinated, and and ultimately, you know, I I want to encourage all of, of our members of the 173rd Fighter Wing to consider getting vaccinated. I think it's good for three three reasons. I think it's good because it's going to end the pandemic a lot quicker, which I think we can all agree that the day that we can get back to normal uh, is, is great. And we all know that uh, the more folks that are vaccinated, the quicker the pandemic is going to end. Mm -hmm. and, for, and more on a personal level, you know, I, as so many people, I, I had a family member who um, was in the hospital for several days back in North Dakota, and he's a couple years older than me, and he's very healthy, and it was scary. Yeah. It was not a good uh, situation. He, he overcame it. And I also know that many family, uh, many airmen in the wing have lost family members, and mm -hmm. that's very tragic. Uh, and uh, and to suffer that kind of loss, so uh, the the loss, the uh, destruction to our lives is very real. And so I felt like anything that I could do to help my family, to help out the community, so that. Um, you know, more folks can get vaccinated would be would be good. And then, you know, lastly, I thought, you know, from our mission perspective, we think about the disruption to our mission that when we had to go into split shifts, we think about um, the importance of our mission here of uh, turning F-15 pilots, serving or mm -hmm. supporting combat operations. You know, it really hits home when we had to reduce our flying schedule, we had to reduce our maintenance schedules um, to um, confront this pandemic. And the more folks that get vaccinated, the more that we can now get back to normal. It brings a lot of peace of mind to me knowing that, you know, if I'm exposed to somebody who's positive, um, that if I'm fully vaccinated, which I am now, I, I don't have to quarantine, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I can continue to come to work normally. And I know for many folks, including myself, being able to come to work was a huge morale boost, right? So uh, getting back to seeing our, our peers, our, our teammates, our women here on base is, is important in, in my life and, and everybody else. So, you know, I, I really understand that it's a, a big decision uh, to get vaccinated, but in the end, I think it's a great it's a great opportunity, and we've got vaccines available for the wing. Um, but uh, you know, in the in the end, like I said, I think it, it helps bring the end of the pandemic quicker if we all get vaccinated. It helps our families, it helps our communities. Um, but I do recognize it's a it's a big decision, and there's a lot of factors that are weighing on people's minds, right? It's and very big. Thoughts on that. I would agree with a lot of what you said so far, but uh, as a physician, my biggest concern at the moment is that the longer this pandemic goes on, uh, the more likelihood that the virus will have um, further mutations. You know, we already know of, of hundreds, uh, there's three big ones that we're watching, but there have been a lot of mutations already to the virus, and the longer it, it's allowed to stay in the community, the more likely it could only make things worse than what it is now. So it's, it's, it's a big decision for a lot of people, and I'm sure that for some people it's, it's as big of a decision as if, you know, considering having surgery. And, and they, you know, they recognize that it may not be, although it, it's, it's a very safe vaccine, no matter what we do, there's always a risk. And that they have to make that decision for themselves as to whether or not they, they think the, the small risk that there might be is, is worthwhile to getting the vaccine for them. Right, and and like you said, it's a it's a big decision, and I know for me when I confront big life decisions, which I think this is, it's mm -hmm. important to reach out to family, to friends, to coworkers, 
because we can all look at the data and the numbers, but there's that comfort in reaching out to somebody who might have already been vaccinated, right? Right. And we have a, a, a large uh, number of people in the wing that have been vaccinated. It's over 100 so far. So I think, uh, you know, sometimes it's good just to ask your your teammate, your friend, your family members, you know, what was it like to get vaccinated, you know, and uh, to share their story as well. Mm -hmm. That can kind of help us to to gain a, a, an understanding of how other people approach this too. Because it definitely isn't easy, you know, um, um, especially if, if you have concerns about risk levels and there's so much information out there, it can become overwhelming, right? Oh, sure. And, and a lot of the information that's out there right now is not very good information. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories out there um, regarding the potential for microchips or for uh, the, the possibility that it might have been uh, developed in association with uh, fetal tissue from, from aborted babies. There are so many scary stories out there that have no relevance to the truth at all in how these vaccines were developed. Uh, even some of the, the less um, troublesome is, you know, the, 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 the story that these mRNA vaccines are completely brand new, that, that we've never done this before, and, and that's not true either. I mean, these, this um, technology has been used in veterinary medicine for quite a while now, and we've been working with the technology for uh, at least 10, 15 years. These are the first ones to actually um, be successful, but they're successful, you know, and we've now at this point, we've We've um, administered the, the vaccines to more than 40 million people across the United States just in the last three, four months. And, and there has not been any pattern at all to, uh, to actual safety concerns, short of what we would expect with any other vaccine. Right. And, you know, my understanding and part of my decision matrix was extremely low risk of an adverse reaction. Um, and, but I would say most people know from talking to their friends or family that uh, you, you might encounter some side effects, right, from a vaccine. Just like it's always possible. Flu. Yep. And uh, for myself, I'll be completely honest, I had a sore arm after the first one. After the second one, I kind of felt pretty run down the next day. Yep. Um, so did I. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't come on immediately, but the next morning I woke up and I thought, oh, I felt pretty run down. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a fever. Uh, but I remember thinking, okay, I'll get through this. And next day I woke up, felt fine. And uh, I still think that, you know, that, that minor discomfort for that day is totally worth it to me, uh, knowing that I'm fully vaccinated. And, um, and, I, th and I think, uh, like I said, the, the risk overall was very, very low for a uh, serious uh, reaction. So yeah. to me, that uh, uh, was something good to put behind me. But I, I do acknowledge that, you know, uh, many people are going to be looking at all the risk factors and, um, and uh, ultimately it's going to be their decision, right? This is voluntary. Sure. That's one of the, the common questions that we hear. Is this going to be mandatory? Is, is there going to be a day when this is going to be mandatory? And the answer is no. And this is each airman, each teammate at Kingsley Field, I really want them to discern what is right for them. You know, my personal belief uh, is I think it would be great as we can get as many airmen and teammates here at Kingsley vaccinated as possible. Definitely. You know, bring an end to the pandemic soonest. It's best for our mission, mm -hmm. in, my, in my opinion, and it's best for our families. And as evidence, you know, I think one of the things that was um, fairly significant is there's a large percentage of the pilots that are now vaccinated. Correct. Yep. A very large percentage. Um, and that's huge because our business is, Harry Kingsley, is to train up 15 pilots. So if any one of them were exposed, uh, that, that could seriously um, put a damper on our mission capability. And for a group of folks that are the most concerned about their health and being able to continue to fly, they were the first to stand up and volunteer for the, the vaccinations. And the moment they heard there was even a possibility we would have them on base, they were calling uh, to get scheduled and, and uh, to get in as soon as possible. So I was I was very impressed with that group. Yeah. You know, and I, I just want to also acknowledge that I'm really thankful for people uh, that um, are uh, willing to share their story. I think that's important. 
you know, so we have people on the wing that have been vaccinated, so I think, as, as I'm encouraging everyone to get the facts, make their own decision, but recognize uh, the value in it, to reach out, reach out, and um, because, like I said, oftentimes in life when we're encountered with what seems overwhelming amount of information, we go to the people that we know and we trust the best, especially the people that have been through that experience yes. and offer that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that we are willing to share our story or decision process of why we got vaccinated, uh, the more of our teammates may consider stepping up and getting vaccinated. Yeah, and I would hope that if anybody does have any significant questions that they just don't feel like they can get enough information about, that they're willing to reach out and contact me as well. Yeah. I'm more than happy to talk to anybody and just simply give them the truth and let them make their own decisions. You know, I, I also am not too concerned. I, I would hope that everybody would be vaccinated, but I'm not going to be too concerned about trying to pressure anybody into it because it is a decision for themselves. And, you know, hopefully we will never um, have an adverse event um, here at the base. And we have not yet with the several hundred that we have vaccinated so far. But there is always that risk. And, and I always keep that in the back of my mind. So, you know, it's, it is a gamble. But, you know, hopefully the, the gamble um, has a, a lot more reward than there is potential risk out of it. You bet. And, you know, if airmen want to receive the vaccine, it's pretty easy, right? It's, it's very easy. All they need to do is reach out and contact the med group. Um, you know, we have been sending out now the, both a telephone contact numbers as well as an email uh, now in the weekly updates that Colonel Orgeron is sending out. And all they need to do is contact us and we will um, get them, uh, at least add them to the waiting list, if not get them scheduled. You know, there is a little bit of complication on our end with the med group in the fact that we do need 10 people at a time to open up a vial. Um, but, you know, we are trying to make it as easy as possible for everybody on base because we know it's, you know, it, it's it's a big step for somebody to even raise their hand in the first place. So if they're willing to go that far, we'll try to make it as e easy as possible for them. That's, you bet. And, uh, um, you know, I think you comment already, but, you know, I, I think uh, – you had mentioned kind of your decision matrix and, and getting vaccinated. What were some of the things in your mind that you thought, oh, this, is, this is what's leading down that path to get vaccinated? Yeah, for me, um, you know, I, I haven't had um, somebody close um, in the hospital or, or dealing with COVID yet. But um, as a physician, I actually did have an opportunity where I talked to several of the physicians face-to-face -face who were in New York City last year in the heat of it, um, in, in the middle, you know, Know, um, dealing with people um, passing away on almost a daily basis um, in the hospitals uh, in New York City, and and it really hit hit them hard. I mean, and that's the thing with COVID is is a lot of people talk about well, you know, the fatality rate isn't as bad as as influenza or it's the same as, but there's so much more to this. I mean, you know, I know lots of people who now are suffering from PTSD because they've been in the healthcare system in the thick of it dealing with people passing away from COVID and, and there are also, you know, non-fatality um, side effects of the actual illness as well. You know, some people are suffering from long-term nerve damage um, just because uh, they had COVID and it was a rather mild illness, but, you know, the virus can affect other things than, than just giving you those, those flu-like symptoms. So to me, you know, I mean, fortunately with my background, I have a, a much better understanding of the, the vaccine technology. I was perfectly comfortable with it. And knowing the, the significant impact that COVID has had on the community and the world as a whole, you know, I, I didn't even hesitate with the possibility of getting vaccinated because I knew this is the only way we're going to get out of this in the next couple of years. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, we've got uh, bright days ahead. I think we've got a great opportunity here yep. uh, for uh, our team to uh, volunteer to get vaccinated. Again, I, I thanks for the conversation today with you, Doc. I think you've given a lot of great perspective and sharing your story and some of your insights. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing as many of our teammates uh, step forward if they want to volunteer to get vaccinated for, for them to do so in the near future. Appreciate your time today. Yes, sir. Thanks.